I'm Stephen Benoon and you are watching Israeli News Live. Uh, two rockets were fired from Syria into the Golan. Uh, the Israelis did respond by taking out the rocket launcher that launched the rockets into the Israeli territory of the Golan Heights uh, earlier today. But it, the tensions are definitely high. Israel has also been digging in trenches on the Syrian uh, Golan Syrian border in an expectation of uh, much more unrest to follow and possibly even a ground invasion. They are digging in on the Golan Syrian border for this very particular reason there. In the article released by uh, Israel National News, it was a follow-up article after the uh, report came out about the uh, rockets. It said a senior IDF source remarked on the two rockets fired from Syria that hit the Golan Heights Tuesday afternoon, saying the IDF response uh, strike took out the rocket launcher. The rockets were fired from a territory under control of Syrian President Bashar uh, al-Assad, according to the source, who added that those who actively launched the rockets were members of the Iran proxy Hezbollah terrorist organization, which has been fighting for Assad. In response to the attacks, the IDF has raised the preparedness level on Israel's Air Force, uh, the IAF basis, Tuesday night to be ready for any further development that may require rapid airstrike response. In the attack on Tuesday, two rockets hit two separate regions of the Golan Heights, one in uh, Hermon region and the other in El Rom region there. That is in the very far upper northern uh, borders of Israel there, the northeast border and the Golan Heights there, uh, where we've actually been just south of that region there. We could actually see uh, the uh, Hermon uh, Mountain there. Uh, in fact, we we're trying to share some of these photos with you that we've taken there on the Syrian border. Uh, further news, this is the 70th anniversary for um, the liberation of Auschwitz. It's something that's very dear to me, this particular anniversary, because I had many, many family members killed in Auschwitz. And uh, also, uh, those that may not be aware of this, it was the Russians who liberated, uh, not that people are not aware that the Russians liberated the Auschwitz uh, camp, but also during the remembrance in Auschwitz at the Poland, uh, at the museum there, Vladimir Putin was not invited to the event. He took quite a bit of an offense to that, but he was involved in the celebrations in Russia, and he was there with the chief rabbi there, uh, Rabbi uh, Beryl Lazer, and also uh, an interesting move that Russia made in, in light of the Holocaust Remembrance Day, the Russian defense minister released a, tr a drove of secret Auschwitz documents uh, as well. The article that was reported on the Moscow Times says, as the world reflected the horrors of the Nazi regime on Tuesday, International Holocaust Remembrance Day, Russia sees the opportunity to emphasize the Red Army's role in liberating the death camps. Following a recent high-profile spat over differing interpretations of World War II's history, the defense minister released 15 historic documents which had been hidden away in secret archives for decades. The historic events of World War II have been used to serve various political interests. Uh, the defense minister announced statements were made that cast into doubt the decisiveness contribution of the Red Army's fighters in liberating the prisoners of the concentration camps. But there are documents in the archives living witnesses of these events that preserve this historic truth. Top Russian officials react swiftly to the comments made by Polish Foreign Minister uh, Grozigov uh, Shitna, who said during a radio interview last week that the first Ukrainian front and the Ukrainians liberated the concentration camp as on that uh, January day there were Ukrainian soldiers, so they opened the gates of the camp. Russia's foreign ministry issued a sharply worded statement in response. It is really difficult to imagine that the government official of, of, of a level uh, as a high as uh, Shitnia could be so arrogant. According to the freshly released defense ministry's documents, members of 39 different national and ethnic groups participated in the liberation, including Russians, Ukrainians, Belarusians, Armenians, Ostians, and Georgians. The documents included reports compiled by the Red Army's officers and Soviet journalists, as well as the table that lists all the nationalities of the soldiers who served in the 1st Ukrainian Front's 60th Army, which liberated Auschwitz. Among the dro uh, trove are a number of reports detailing popular gratitude to Soviet leader uh, Yosef Stalin for their liberation. You can, of course, you can go on our Facebook page there, Israeli News Live, and you can read the rest of this article there. But there again, the top news that we're bringing right now 
as it rockets from the Syrian side where the Iranians have been working with Hezbollah. Uh, two rockets were fired into northern Israel today, into the Golan there, no doubt testing to see if uh, the, uh, the, the defense shield that Israel is using, if it is actually up and running, perhaps. Maybe this was what the test was. Sirens are sounding off in the northern part of Israel. And Israel has heightened its alert all the way up to a red alert. From what I read in one article there, they're up to a red alert prepared for any other uh, attacks that could come tonight. I'm Stephen Benoon. We will keep you up to date uh, if we see any developments tonight. Show home and good night.